James Mathers for the Digital Cinema Society. I'm at the West Coast headquarters for Creative Solutions, and Colin McDonald's going to tell us a little bit about new products from Small HD and Teradek. So what do we have here? It looks like a Small HD monitor. Yeah, exactly. We've got a whole new uh, lineup of Small HD um, production monitors, and what we've been trying to do with all of our monitors is transition to 4K resolution. So the latest one to do this is our Cine 13 model. Um, the Cine 13 replaces our 1303, which was incredibly successful uh, with camera assistance um, because of its size and its uh, usability with our PageOS operating system. We're one of the few companies that actually has an operating system for our monitors so that you have tool sets, you have setup wizards, um, and it just makes the experience of using the monitor a lot easier and a lot quicker for ACs. So uh, the, the big thing that we really pushed for this particular uh, upgrade was the display. Um, when you're on set with a DP, uh, oftentimes they'll come and look over your shoulder as you're trying to pull focus. And you'll say, no, no, don't look at this monitor. You know, it's it's uh, it's it's not Set up for focus. Rated. Yeah, it's not it's not for you to view. It's for me to you know focus on my job. Um, but we felt that we really wanted to make sure that the Cine 13, the 13 inch model, had an incredible display. So we have a brand new display. Um, it has a 1300 uh, to one contrast ratio. It has 1500 nits of brightness. Has a uh, 10. Um, bits of uh, uh, bit depth um, so uh, and it covers uh, the full 100 percent of Rex 709. Uh, beautiful picture but Colin I don't see any wires coming out of this monitor. I know right so the the other thing that we did when in addition to the display is put it in a brand new chassis and the chassis is uh, 25 percent lighter and 20 percent thinner than the previous model and we now have a powered um, rail system here. So the the dual battery plate uh, will actually, with, without any cables, will power the monitor. You can put your Teradek uh, receiver on here and you'll see that the kind of the theme of our uh, products is to minimize all the GAC that's around it and to simplify your workflow but at the same time have um, customizations that you can tailor your specific rig to your needs. Uh, Cine 13 also has a variety of mounting points on the top, bottom, and, and side um, for, say, your RT um, handset. Well, how about latency? I know that's the enemy of focus pullers. So along with Small HD, Teradek uh, complements it in, in that um, we have a whole family of products for zero delay um, wireless video. And so um, we have a new chip that we designed custom in-house called the BB3 uh, silicon chip. And basically it allows 4K HDR transmission um, at zero delay. And I think there's you know, been a lot of products out there that are Wi-Fi based. Um, which have some delay and it requires you to have an iPad or some other s viewing scenario that sometimes can be easy but it's going to have a delay and so uh, using radio frequency is a lot better solution so that you have zero delay on set. As an AC you, you, you have to, you have to have a zero delay. So this might be ideal for an AC or a, a director on set or, or even a DP but what about uh, larger monitors that you might have for uh, yeah, uh, so Video Village. Yeah, so we have uh, two other monitors that are uh, fairly new, but um, our Cine 24, 24 inch monitor, that's kind of our workhorse. Um, and that monitor uh, is a thousand to one contrast ratio. It's 1350 nits of brightness, so it's ultra bright. Um, it has 95% uh, of DCI P3 color space, so uh, the color accuracy is incredible. Um, but when you really want to step up to uh, a post-production um, OLED monitor, there are very few OLED monitors left in the industry, which is really unfortunate because beautiful pictures. Yeah, they're absolutely beautiful. It's that million to one contrast ratio. Uh, we have our um, OLED 22. So it's a 22 inch uh, OLED and it's 350 nits of brightness. And like I say, 100% of P3 color space. Um, so it's really, one of the last OLEDs, so I would suggest buying that before the industry completely loses its OLEDs. Um, but we have a plan for the future, and that's uh, our Vision series, which is all about HDR, um, specifically designed for HDR and a thousand nits of brightness. 
Um, so I think that's gonna, it's on the horizon, but, uh, but that's really gonna be the future of, of our uh, displays, which HDR is, is becoming incredibly important and you have to view it on set. You can't just look at it and post, um, otherwise you're gonna miss a lot. And so this allows you the opportunity to actually afford an HDR monitor on set. They're getting pretty pricey. So yeah. what's, what about this one here? Yeah, so part of our, um, our lineup of uh, Bolt 4K products, we have three families of products that are all, again, uh, on the same BB3 chip. So they're all intercompatible. But they have a few different feature sets. Uh, it starts with our um, Bolt 4K, original Bolt 4K. Uh, that has uh, 4K over HDMI, 4K over SDI. It has uh, HDR 10-bit compatible. You can connect uh, one transmitter with six receivers, um, and it has 256-bit encryption. Um, so the original Bolt 4K is designed to click onto your battery plate and is in line with the battery plate. So it doesn't feel too big. It's right there, but it has all the features that you need. Um, and that comes in a 750-foot uh, range, a 1,500-foot range, and what we call our max range. We call it max because um, by itself, uh, it's 3,000 feet of range, but it has a mode called broadcast mode, which can up the range to 5,000 feet and uh, has unlimited receiver connectability. So that's sometimes very important. Uh, for crews that have many monitors on set, you need more than six. Now it has a touch screen on this? Yeah, so then the next uh, version in our family and the newest is called our Bolt 4K uh, monitor module. And this is a monitor module that connects to our small HD touch screen monitors. So uh, the Cine 7, the Indy 7, and the 702 touch. Um, and what is really cool about this monitor, or, or this, uh, Bolt 4K is that you can now do wireless camera control um, to another remote uh, handset. So Small HD has always had um, camera control via a cable, but now you can send that control to your receiver on a different 702 or uh, Cine 7 or Indy 7, and you can control um, a Red Komodo, uh, Area Alexa Mini, Mini LF, and Amira, and we'll have some Sony cameras down the pipeline. So touch screen from a, a, d a distant location, the DP could be sitting back and adjusting the camera? Exactly, exactly. I love that. Yeah, so that, that's a new feature that we're really excited about and I don't think is, is quite matched elsewhere. And how about those guys down there? Yeah, so then the third um, version of our Bolt 4K system is called the Bolt 4K LT. And this was really spawned by uh, wanting to have a smaller transmitter, a really tiny transmitter that you could put on a Movi or you could put anywhere. Um, and uh, it has all the same features as our Bolt 4K, just shrunk down, except uh, the, the SDI is only HD instead of 4K. But a lot of productions, that's totally fine. Um, very few cameras actually output 4K. They record it, but they don't output it. Exactly, exactly. So I think in a lot of cases, this is um, what people want. And this comes in the 750, 1500, or max versions. Um, so I think the max is kind of having the small form factor, unlimited receivers with broadcast mode, and up to 5,000 plus feet. Uh, this is kind of the workhorse um, for a lot of people. And are there different frequencies that they can operate on? Yeah, so it has it, it does operate on a variety of frequencies, and it have what's called DFS, um, is uh, a way of controlling automatically. Um, we actually, at Teradek, we're, it's very important to us that we stay within the legal bounds of um, the frequencies. And I think there's a lot of companies out there that, that sort of ignore those legal bounds. And so we use a system that automatically will switch between frequencies if there's, say, some government frequency or some uh, weather frequency. We can just automatically seamlessly switch and you have no interruption in your service, but we're absolutely keeping to, uh, to code, so to speak. Yeah, it's actually getting very crowded on set with so many wireless uh yeah. Uh, instruments from the sound people and the lighting people and so mm -hmm. this gives you more chances to avoid all yeah. that. Having that dynamic switching is incredibly important to to just ease of use and you don't have to worry about it. And what's the difference with this uh, bigger one? Uh, this one, this is the tra uh, the receiver, so here's the transmitter, here's the receiver, they are slightly smaller than the, well certainly the transmitter is very smaller 
than the um, original Bolt 4K. Okay. So these are a team. These are the team, yep. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you very much, Great. Colin. Appreciate it. Thank you.